What's up, it's Foster and we're back with the 22 Deborah X. So if you guys have been following along on the build series, we've got a prototype FA24 installed and we've also done the full break-in procedure. But there's still one more important thing that we've got to do and that is we've got to install an oil pressure gauge. So in the last video, we used this temporary mechanical oil pressure gauge just to make sure that we we're getting the right amount of oil pressure and everything looked good on the first couple starts. But obviously you're not gonna be able to use this when you're driving around. So we picked up an AEM digital oil pressure gauge and this is gonna be super handy. It's gonna tell us our engine vitals while we're driving around. So it reads up to 150 PSI, which will be great for our application. You can also set up some lights to come on when your oil pressure drops below a certain threshold. So hopefully this will warn you in time if you ever do have an engine issue, you can still save your engine. Uh, it's compatible with aftermarket ECUs, which we don't need in our case, but it's still a really nice feature to have. Uh, and supposedly it's supposed to be a pretty in easy install too, so why don't we run over all the different parts that we've got and I can go over the tools that you're gonna need and then we can get started. So real fast, I'm gonna run over everything that's in the kit. Uh, first of all, you're gonna get your harness, uh, then you have your oil pressure sensor, uh, you got four butt connectors, and then of course you have your oil pressure gauge. And then this did not come in the kit, but I did pick up a 3D printed gauge pod, uh, and it replaces your OEM AC vent, so we'll still have a functional vent, but this way we can have the gauge pod as well. So real quick, let's go over the tools that you're gonna need for this project, I've got them all laid out. I've got a quarter inch ratchet, 3 8 inch ratchet, 15 16 inch socket, 10 and 7 millimeter socket, then a 16 millimeter wrench, a trim removal tool, a small ring terminal for connecting the ground later on. If you want to maintain your factory oil pressure uh, light, then you need a little T connection there. Uh, I've got adifuses and then an oil rag. You're also gonna want a 15 16 inch crow's foot and that's gonna help you tighten down the AEM oil pressure sensor. Start by disconnecting the negative terminal on your battery. And since this project does involve some electrical work, this step is especially important. So on the FA24, the oil pressure sensor is located just underneath of the oil filter. So luckily it's not gonna be too hard to reach. So the first step you gotta do is remove the rubber cap and then you wanna undo the screw that's holding on the sensor wire. Next, use your 15 16 inch deep well socket, or you can use a 24 millimeter socket if you have that instead to loosen the factory oil pressure sensor. So before we install the T connection, I'm gonna put a couple drops of this Loctite thread sealant on there, and that's gonna make sure that we don't have any leaks once we get this installed. So once you get that T-fitting installed and finger tight, then you can give it another two to three turns or roughly tighten it down to five to seven foot-pounds. All right, I got our T-fitting tightened down nice and snug. Something to keep in mind when you're doing this project is make sure you leave it clocked in a way that will allow easy access for your other oil pressure sensors. Use some thread sealant on both of your sensors and then go ahead and install them. I've got the AEM oil pressure sensor in and hand tight. Now I'm gonna use a crow's foot to tighten it until it's snug. So we're gonna do the same thing with the OEM oil pressure sensor. Start it by hand and then once it gets hand tight, you can use your deep well socket to tighten it down. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the OEM sensor wire and the cover. So now that everything's tight, we can plug in our AEM harness. One of the last steps I needed to do was route my wiring harness, and I found an OEM wiring harness that I'm gonna piggyback off of, and I'm gonna secure our new AEM harness to it using some zip ties. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the process of snaking that wiring harness through the rubber grommet on the firewall was kind of annoying, but one tool that helped me do it was this hard line. I taped my wiring harness to here, and then I stuck it through. That seemed to make it pretty easy. You can also use a tool like a coat hanger or really anything you got laying around the shop. We're actually gonna do an additional step. We're gonna deep pin the harness that way. We don't have to make a very big hole in our rubber grommet, but alternatively, you can just make a bigger hole through the grommet and run your harness through it that way. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm gonna use a trim removal tool and gently pry out the vent on the dashboard. Using your trim removal tool, pry off this side panel here next to your vents and that's gonna give us access to run our harness. So I think I devised a system to get our wiring harness from down by the pedals, which is where it's at currently, up to this vent right here, which is where we're gonna need it to install our new gauge. And what I did is I found some really bright colored electrical cable and I ran it through the dash. I popped these side panels off, ran it through there, and then it connects down here. Uh, I tied it to our new harness and now I'm gonna fish it back the same path that I ran this cable and then our harness should be where we want it. So as you can see, I got the harness routed through the dash. Now we can repin it to our connector. So a quick mock-up of the gauge, I think it's gonna look really nice on the dash. So obviously we've got this other portion of the harness in the way at the moment, it's sitting above the dash. So I'm gonna route it the same way we routed the other harness. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna tap into the fuse box and it's also gonna be our ground. All right, now we're gonna install our ring terminal. We've got the ring terminal on our ground connection. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the add a fuse. So now we're ready to find a power source for our new oil pressure gauge. I went ahead and removed the fuse box cover on the driver's side, and I'm looking for a fuse that's 12 volt and ignition powered. That way the gauge will turn off with the car. I think I found the perfect one for the cigarette lighter, so I'm gonna use the multimeter to verify that the fuse is only getting power when the car's on. So I found a little bolt that I think I'm gonna use for the ground, so I'm gonna remove that and then we can put on our ring terminal. Once we get the ring terminal installed, we can go ahead and re-tighten down the bolt. It's time for the moment of truth. I'm really hoping that our new gauge works and I don't have to mess with any of the wiring. So let's see if it gets power and then after that, we'll see if it gets a reading. Well, the good news is it does look like it's lighting up. So let's go ahead and start the car. Awesome news, it looks like the gauge is working and we're getting an accurate reading. It's somewhere around that 83 PSI, which is normal when your oil's cold, is gonna be higher oil pressure. So this is gonna be a really handy tool for us now as we put more miles on the WX, we can monitor our engine's health. Uh, I do have a little bit of cleanup to do though. As you can tell, I still have some panels removed from the side of the dash. So I'm gonna get everything put back together and then we'll wrap this up. As you can tell from the footage, one thing that I wasn't super happy with during this installation is the quality of the gauge pod itself. But uh, I've decided this is gonna be more of a temporary solution because unfortunately, there's no place to route the cables except for through the AC vent itself. So if you guys wanna see us make an IEG gauge pod or something like that, let me know. Well, that's pretty much a wrap for our oil pressure gauge install. Honestly, it went pretty easily, and uh, I think the whole engine bay looks nice and clean. You can barely even tell that we installed an oil pressure gauge, so I'm pretty happy about that. Don't be intimidated by electrical and projects like this. Hopefully you can tell it's really not so bad when you break it down into little steps. Uh, and hopefully you found this installation video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.